Okay. Ready? Okay, so this is the chemical reactions lab. And the first thing that they're gonna have you do is take a piece of magnesium ribbon and you're gonna hold it in the Bunsen burner flame and see what happens. Okay, so hopefully you saw that. Okay, the next thing they have you do is take some sodium bicarbonate and they want to light the splint. You're gonna hold it over the flask and notice that it burns. And I could just leave this here and it would burn the entire splint out. So it would just keep burning. Okay, now I'm gonna heat up this baking soda. And I'm gonna watch it for a little bit and I'm gonna be looking for some condensation that's gonna appear on the inside of the flask. So already I can see some condensation. So I'm gonna go ahead and light this splint again and hold it over the mouth of the flask. Oh, it looks like I need to wait just a little bit longer. Okay, so now you can see that it extinguished the flame. So I'll shut that off. Okay, then I have over here, I have two test tubes and I've already put the HCl in there, the hydrochloric acid. And to one of those test tubes, I'm gonna put in a piece of magnesium ribbon. And I'm gonna watch and see what happens. And you should be able to see some bubbles that are occurring in here. That's evidence of a chemical reaction. And it's fizzing, I can hear that. And when I feel the bottom of the, the tube, the tube feels warm. So that's good evidence that I have a chemical reaction. The gas is being produced and I've got some energy change. So that was the magnesium ribbon. We'll just let that keep going. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna have the hydrochloric acid, but now I'm gonna put a piece of copper wire in here. And we're gonna look at that. And I don't see any bubbles. Don't feel any difference in temperature. So we're gonna say nothing happens. So that's, I don't see any evidence of a chemical reaction. Okay, for the next part, I have some silver nitrate in a test tube and it wants me to put a piece of copper wire in that. And it tells me just to set that aside. So I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm just gonna put it back in my rack and we'll check in on that in a little bit. Okay, next I have three test tubes, and in these three test tubes I have the potassium carbonate. And to one of those test tubes, I'm supposed to add 10 drops of the silver nitrate. You 
can see that one turned all milky and it looks cloudy even. You can see a little residue on there. Okay, my next test tube is clear and I'm supposed to add copper nitrate. I can see again now it's blue but there's it's thick it's not clear and transparent like it was before so this one also turned a little bit chunky okay then the third test tube is still the potassium carbonate but now I'm supposed to add aluminum nitrate Okay, so again, this one is turning milky colored again. So in all three of them, they turned cloudy. And that suggests that I had a solid that was formed in each one of those. All right, this is back to that silver nitrate where we put the copper in it. And you should be able to see at the very bottom here, the copper wire it looks like it has um, some gray stuff that's all on it and it kind of looks a little bit like there's some solid accumulating on that and that's actually silver from this solution this was silver nitrate the silver that's in the solution now is actually depositing itself on the wire so that is a chemical reaction I've got that solid that's being produced okay then the last part I've got two test tubes here. I've got one with sulfuric acid, the H2SO4, and this one's the H3PO4. And to that, I'm supposed to add a couple of drops of this phenolphthalein indicator. And this indicator will change color when I neutralize the acid. So now I am adding sodium hydroxide to that, which is a base, and I'm going to count how many drops it takes to turn it color. Okay, I'm up to 10. And you can see it turns color, but when I shake it, a lot of times it's going away. This one looks like it's going to stay just barely pink. I'm going to add one more drop. All right, and that pink color seems to be staying. That's 15 drops, and that was for the H2SO4. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the H3PO4. Okay, that was 16 drops. So 16 drops for the H3PO4. And that is the end of the lab.